Welcome to the Power of Your Mind podcast. I'm Victoria Gallagher, your host. Have you been attempting to use law of attraction or hypnosis to attract financial abundance, a soulmate, or career success? Would you like to be happy, motivated, and successful, have better health, enjoy more fulfilling relationships? overcome struggle and gain mastery over your life, then join me on this amazing self-help podcast where you'll unleash the power of your mind. I'll be sharing 20 years of wisdom and techniques of hypnotherapy, law of attraction, visualization, meditation, personal growth, positive affirmations, and other effective methods to help you tap into the great power which resides in your mind and become the best version of yourself. Well, hello and welcome to today's episode of the Power of Your Mind podcast. You're listening to episode number 77. I'm Victoria Gallagher, Law of Attraction coach and number one best-selling author of Practical Law of Attraction, Align Yourself with the Manifesting Conditions and Successfully Attract Your Desires. I'm also a clinical hypnotherapist, founder of HipTalk.com and HypnoCloud apps, so be sure to stop by HipTalk.com and sign up for your free self-hypnosis video training course. And for our listeners who found us through Power of Your Mind podcast, you can also get 35% off your first order of hypnosis downloads when you apply the code podcast to your shopping cart. Also, be sure to watch for and download our latest HypnoCloud app in the iTunes store. So today, I have a very special guest with me, Julie Reisler. Julie Reisler, life designer, TV host, author, and global brand ambassador, is the founder and CEO of Julie Reisler International, a life design and personal development company. Julie works with individuals, teams, and companies to help them design and take their life and career to the next level. Julie is also a multi-time TEDx speaker, host of the Uist You podcast, and mindfulness teacher on the popular app Insight Timer with over 110,000 downloads. Julie has a master's degree in coaching and more than 12 certifications in leadership, mindset, and well being. Julie is also the author of Get a PhD in You, which is a book series and is on the faculty at Georgetown University in their coaching program. Julie is passionate about helping you to tap into your unique brilliance to be your youest you so you can turn on your inner light and love your life way more. To learn more about Julie, you can go to her website, juliereisler.com. So today, Julie is going to share some of her insights about the PhD methodology and tapping into heart intelligence. So welcome to the show, Julie. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. What a, what a gift. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm really, really happy to have you on the show. You are quite an accomplished woman, and I think you have a lot to offer to our audience here on the Power of Your Mind podcast. So thank you for being a guest on the show. Well, I'm excited. I, I'm ready to dive in with you. This is one of my favorite topics in the entire world, all of, all of what you do and what we're talking about. So Bring it on. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So let's, let's just dive into uh, why, did you, uh, why did you write both Get a PhD in You books? Why did you write those, that, that series? Ooh. All right. So Victoria, I know we don't have like 15 hours. So I'm going <laughs> to condense this. Um, I'm going to give the quick, quick, quick backstory because I think it's very important. Um, and I like to say this because it's very easy to hear, oh, she has books and she's done this. And let me just say that this all started from a place of my own kind of dark night of the soul, some serious darkness that I um, thankfully decided to really move through. And so long story short, I'm going to make it super quick. About 15 years ago, um, I had this moment where I either could have decided to drive myself into a tree or get support. I, um, 
it was in a really rough spot. And what's funny is on the outside, it looked awesome. It looked great. You would have no idea. I was married at the time to a nice person. Um, good job. You know, nothing really bad or wrong. Um, but inside, I was really, 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 really struggling. I, I, I always joke that I had this master's degree in people pleasing. Um, I used and abused food. So I struggled with emotional overeating. And I mean, like, you know, not just like eating an extra Oreo. I mean, like stealing your food, hiding it, binging, eating in the bathroom. I did actually, both my TEDx talks talk about that. Um, and with so much shame, so much shame and so much um, just not feeling connected to who I am. And I thank God, thank God that night I did not go into a tree and I decided to go to a support group. Um, it's 12 step based and I, and I it really just made all the difference. Um, I started to excavate myself and I started to find myself around people that, you know, were being open and honest and sharing what was going on with them. And it just cracked me open. Um, there were a lot of other things. I always joke, you know, 40 grand of therapy, every personal development program, Julia Cameron's artist way and a 12 step program. And you too can kind of get a sense of really what's going on and who, you know, who you are and what you're here to do. I, I think it was probably 10 years in, I was at a, a meeting, a support group, and I just remember coming out. It was one of the first times it was in May. I just felt like complete peace. That was what I was seeking, just peace in myself. And I said to my friend, I said, oh my God, after all these years of intense meetings and you know, sponsor calls and every, all of these things I'm doing, I actually feel peaceful. I said, I feel like I got a PhD in myself. I literally feel like, forget school. Like I just did it. Um, and that, that stuck with me. And so when I started my own business about over five years ago, um, I just, I kept hearing a voice for over a year that was like, Julie, you need to write a book. You need to write a book. You need to write a book. And I thought, well, I'm not the best writer. I love speaking. I'm not the best writer. And Thankfully, they're great editors. <laughs> and <laughs> really, I, I, this first book wrote me. I, um, I sat down and I wrote it. And I mean, hand wrote it. The first book, I hand wow. wrote that thing. Wow. Yeah, I, I'm like looking over there, my notes. I saved everything. It was very, very, very powerful experience. I could see my younger self. I could see people that I'd been working with coaching and I just, it just came through me. It was like birthing this thing. And um, I did get... Uh, great help editing it. I found incredible people to help along the way. And then the second book is really for, you know, my belief is when we, when we have a connection to our deepest desires, to our gifts, our strengths, unique brilliance, to our heart, to our divinity, we are able to live and act and be in a way that is completely uh, in a whole new heightened realm, uh, enlightened, and I would say in heightened realm versus living from you know, fear and mind and ego and lack. And so my life changed drastically from this work I'd done. And I decided um, people were asking me about, could I do it for someone who is struggling in their career or business? And so the second one is the business edition. Okay. So that's the long winded short answer. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Wow. So, I mean, you definitely did. I, I agree with you. I mean, you definitely did get a PhD in you because, you know, I mean, only when you really take that time out and, and, and discover and, and, you know, just really, it's, it is about taking that time out and owning our life and owning who, you know, who we are and all our problems and, and, and figuring all that stuff out and really being willing to dive in. I'm so glad that you chose to, you know, to, to save yourself that night. Yeah, I, I will say that this work is a, is a daily uh, practice. And so, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm laughing a little because what happened was all areas of my life, I started to see, you know, we're, we're the drivers, we're the designers, whether we see it or not. And mm -hmm. that's, that's why I use the term life designer. And I started to see, okay, wow, my career doesn't fit. That marriage didn't fit that like my health had a breakdown. Everything started to, um, now I can look back and say, wow, what an opportunity to really redesign everything. Um, so much has shifted. And so, you know, I'm, I, uh, I'll be very honest. I'm, uh, I have a former husband and two children. I'm remarried, but still dealing with some of the stuff that I dealt with with him and realizing like, can't control other people can only be in yourself and create from, you know, your own beliefs and heart and, and, and having that, that, that connection to yourself. So I'm practicing all of this every day. It's part of why I love, love, love talking yeah. about this because it helps me, 
need to stay solid and sturdy. You know, and it's such a good point because I do believe that all of this, it's a way of life. I mean, it's not like, you know, when, I mean, when we, um, you know, when we take this journey on and we decide, you know, we're, we're going to align our lives and design our own lives and, you know, whether it be, you know, life design, as you call it, or, you know, my, I call it law of attraction, you know, you attract oh, yeah. who you are, um, you know, whether we do that, um, because maybe, you know, a lot of, a lot of times I think people are looking for a quick fix and, you know, they're, they're in pain or they, they want something to be different. They want to change something. And, mm-hmm. and I, I think it's really important to understand that, you know, that while you might want a quick fix, this you're 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 choosing a new lifestyle that you're going to have to continue down this road if you want to continue to get good results same same way with anything you know when you're i don't know i don't know if you can hear this uh, weird thing that's happening um just unplugged my okay i think that might be better anyway um you know just like with anything though i i do believe that um, like we are making a decision to really do something each, each and every day. It's a life, it's a life choice. So absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I think, and we can talk about it, you know, law of attraction. Um, my gosh, I mean, I lean on that, like, you know, and that's been a big, big shift is leaning on those laws right? Those laws versus, um, I, 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 I'm like, not always a rule follower with other laws. I mean, I don't break laws a lot, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the laws of, of the universe. I'm interested in the laws that govern, you know, our, the way that we, our livelihood, our, the way that we are, um, life. And that, that to me, that's, that's what I tune into. And I think it's so connected what we're doing. Um, and, you know, it, it's not a quick fix, but what I will say, it's exactly what you said. It, it, you know, it is a, it is a, um, it's a way of life and it's a, it's a daily embodiment. Um, and I think, you know, getting it that way makes it, it's, it's not about the quick win. It's just, how can I feel more connected today to who I am? I really I love that. I love that. So what are some of the ways that a person can get a PhD in you? Yeah. So you know, look, there's in the first book, there are, I think, over 65 activities. Um, oh. There's a ton of questions. There's a t- it's very interactive. It has my story woven in, but I really wanted it to be, um, when, I, when I started getting into my own journey and recovery, I wrote in the pages of everything and I was like, oh, I just wish there was room to write more. So I made it, there's a lot of room to write. Um, the, to boil it down, look, one of the best things that you can do, so called in the second book I really it's designed with these three pillars in mind and it's 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 this play on PhD. So the quick thing you can do if you really want to kind of tune into we're talking now about you know the question of like what am I here for? How can I make the biggest impact? What um what is what is my purpose, my divine purpose? What is what is it that is that's uniquely brilliant about me that that's here for this reason? You know, as one in fourteen trillion, that's the chances of being born. So when you get that, that's kind of where I come from. Is okay, the one in fourteen trillion. That's like that's not that's a crazy odd. Like you have more possibility of winning the lottery like five times than that. So you know, we're here for a reason. And I think one of the easy ways to do that, so P stands for past. And what I, what I talk about is really searching your past for a high point moment experience time when you were thriving, when you felt alive, when you felt energized, when you felt just such joy and start to notice those times, to, you know, create a, create a list, create a journal, but you want to really, you want to go to the past. And we usually look at where we suck. I want you to look at where you've where you're thriving, where you thrived, where you had a lot of energy, where you um, had moments of losing time, son of time. Um, So you go to the past as P. Then what you will do is have a listing of that. And that's kind of like your, the breadcrumbs on the treasure hunt. H is for honoring the present. So both appreciating what is working right now, what works well, what is working well in my life, where am I feeling fulfilled? There's always something, you know, I've worked with a lot of clients that are like, I don't know. I'm like, oh, I could sit with you and we could find 50 right now. I guarantee you. Mm-hmm. And then he is really the direction of your, of your desires and dreams. And so you pull through where have I been at my best, felt alive, felt, you know, thriving, nourished, um, at my peak. And then what's working now, how does that carry forward into the future? And 
it's, it's just unbelievable. I've done this with so many people. It's really changing your lens. But what happens is we start getting into a different, um, you could call it vibration or a different way of feeling or thinking or looking at yourself. And all of a sudden new ideas come like, Oh, okay. I really want to, you know, the, my desire is <laughs> to make an impact, but I've noticed I really love building community. This has just happened to me. I realized I got to build a community. That's what I do. <laughs> That's what I love, right? So, <clears throat> so really, but those are clues. And often we miss them. We're going so quickly. And in this world, in this society, we go so fast. I, mm-hmm. One of my biggest, <laughs> one of my biggest uh, points of learning and opportunity, and I'll say this for everyone listening, is to slow down, to oh. manage you know, where you give your attention. Um, I just heard someone the other day, you know, they called their phone, this, the chief distracting officer, like <laughs> love you know, it. chief like, distracting yeah. officer, <laughs> like this is a distraction. So I'm only going to use it when it's really going to serve. And, and, and so, you know, it's sort of shifting gears anyhow. So those, the PhD is really a great quick methodology that I use. And yes, it, it came to me, you know, at the gym, all good thoughts come <laughs> on the road or at the gym. I don't know. <laughs> you know what? I get so many of my ideas when I'm moving my body. I really do. When I'm, you know, like you said, at the gym or when I'm out running or walking or hiking anytime, you know, and I, I don't know if I equate, if I attribute that to being out in nature or if it's, if it's the actual physical movement, but I've, I've actually thought that there needs to be some sort of technology around extracting all the great ideas that come from just being out there and moving your body. Cause I don't know. I, I don't know if other people experience that, but since you mentioned it, it does yeah. seem like maybe there's, there's something down that tunnel. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I think we also get out of the, um, the autonomic stress response where, you know, I know for me when I'm driving, um, I get in this kind of hypnotic state now I'm still paying attention, but the the information that comes to me, frankly, signs, thoughts, ideas, it's unbelievable. Same with moving, especially in nature. And I do think it's that probably similar state, maybe pre-state to hypnosis, I don't know, but I would think like there's something similar in the in the brain waves. Yeah. Oh, and plus it's like changing your focus. Cause I I find, you know, I mean for me, I, you know, I do spend on a lot of time in front of my computer and, um, you know, working, writing, um, recording, doing, you know, but it's not always that, (laughs) you know, sometimes it's checking Facebook or checking this or checking this or checking that. And you can get caught in that little spiral, that little rut of doing those common things and nothing's coming out of that. So I just find if I'm in that mode, I've literally got to pick myself self up and and walk away from my computer and <laughs> do something different. <laughs> um, so yeah, I love this uh, to summarize, you know, that, I mean, number one, you said, you know, we're here for a reason. I mean, one out of it, you know, 14 trillion, uh, you know, little sperms or <laughs> whatever you want to call them. <laughs> it, that is, it, it's interesting to think about. And we never really, we've t- I, I, I think most people take that for granted or, or yeah. don't even think about it or don't even realize that that is a thing. And so, no, and then I like your past, um, the way that you define, you know, past and honoring the present and the direction for the future, you know, looking at, you know, looking at what you've accomplished and what you're good at and, and looking at what you're good at in this moment and where, where are you going? It's, it's really a great technology. So getting into you, you talk about mindfulness and so how has mindfulness been Mm -hmm. instrumental in changing your life? If you find value in this personal growth related material, I strongly recommend that you sign up for your $1 trial to my personal growth club. Just head on over to personalgrowthclub.com and get a whole month of premium personal growth club video training materials, meditations. You also get six free hypnosis sessions that are valued at over $174, all for this trial of just $1. Even if you cancel, you can keep the six hypnosis sessions. That's my gift to you. And that's how confident I am that you are going to love Personal Growth Club. Go to personalgrowthclub.com and start your $1 one month trial today. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm like, where 
do I begin? It is, it is, it is like the key that unlock the door um, to help my, you know, you could call it, I don't know that anxiety ridden, addictive <laughs> personality, high achieving self, you know, brain. It's just, it, it has changed my life. And I'd say um, both through doing this recovery work it, through the 12 steps. Yes, very much so, especially in the beginning, but actually when I, I got my master's degree in health and wellness coaching, and one of the courses was in mind-body science, and we learned about, um, we really learned about what happens in the brain when you, when you um, meditate or when you get still and go into mind, use mindfulness, and we had to do it. I had to write a paper on it, and I had to try like 15 different modalities, and my teacher, I remember, I, we, we were in one of these classes, and I remember she's like, okay, we're going to do we use the two hours to actually meditate for the whole time, different ways, not all at once. I could not sit still. I literally had to get up. I couldn't do it. And I, I, I told her and she's like, Julie, <laughs> I remember she's like, I love you. And out of everyone I've met, you need this more than anyone I've met yet. She's like, you have a lot going on up here. It's just all the time. And I'm like, I know I have ideas. I have, you know, I, I just couldn't turn it off. And so using mindfulness, whether it's getting quiet and still and breathing or meditating or tuning into my heart or gut and journaling, um, pausing, you know, just taking a moment before I respond. I mean, there's million being in nature. There's so many ways I could say this practice, um, it's, it's rewired me. I mean, and it's something, you know, at this point, if I don't, if I don't meditate in the morning and sometimes I have kids like taking them to school and I'm like, Oh shoot, I missed my morning routine. You know, I can feel it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's become this amazing, what I love is it's free, it's natural and mm -hmm. it's within us. So it's this like free, awesome drug that works and, um, it's changed my life. It's actually helped me to eat like a normal person. It's changed the way I have my relationship with food. Uh, with my body, with my mind, with my spirit. And, um, you know, I've been blessed to be able to, to give it back and to share meditations and courses and work, um, works all around helping people to, to just soothe themselves, to quiet down. Um, it's, uh, it was the hardest thing for me to do in the beginning. And it's probably one of the biggest gifts I've, I've had in my life. Yeah, I, I think it's so important that people take that time just to get quiet. And there are so many people just like you that, um, you know, they feel like, you know, it's just too hard. I, I can't quiet my mind. I don't know <laughs> how to be still. But, you know, it, you, you can get there and you can definitely take um, you know, small steps and, 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 and get there. And I, I think it's, you know, I mean, I, I just love, I, I just love hearing that that is part of your process because I, I really think it's super important. Can I add one thing to what you said? Is that okay? Absolutely. Just, yes. Well, there's this little like meter inside me that's like, you know, authenticity. Like, let me just say something that I still have a hard time sometimes being, like without, you know, thoughts racing. I mean, I, I'm just going to be honest this morning. I had a, a big emotional morning um, in a good way. I stood up for myself, which is <laughs> learning to do, especially as a female. Um, and I was like, what meditation do I want? And I ended up, I, I picked a guided and I, I halfway through, I'm like, I'm not even listening. I don't know where I am, but I'm not here. And so, you know, and I just got right back to listening and I did another one. I actually ended up doing three this morning. I, I just needed a lot of support this morning. So just to say like, it's been, you know, close to 10 years of almost every day and I still have my mind going, but the difference oh, yeah. is I don't judge myself anymore, which is beautiful. Um, and it still works. It doesn't even matter. It's okay. Like you just come back. So Exactly. Well, I mean, I think even if you, you know, you're a monk that's been meditating on a mountaintop for a hundred years, you're, you're still going to have days, you're going to still have thoughts. I mean, that's what our, our, our mind is designed to do. But I think, you know, it's about not allowing yourself to get caught up in those thoughts and travel down those thoughts. Because, you know, if we can just learn how to catch ourselves when we're thinking and bring ourselves back to this moment, then we can also apply that into everything else that we're doing during the day and catch ourselves when we're getting into a situation that's not good for our, our mind or our body and be able to bring ourselves back to 
what's important. Absolutely. I think it leads perfectly. I know in the beginning you had talked about this idea of heart connection, heart intelligence. Yes, yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. I, sorry. I'm like, <laughs> I know you mentioned it. I'm like, it just occurred to me one of the ways that I, and I, I've been doing this myself for a long time and I teach it and it's so simple and it's so, it's, it's within you is, you know, for me, um, there are a couple places and we know this, whether you're, you know, studied meridians or, uh, tapping or other modalities where, um, you know, touching your body, Reiki, for example, there's just, there's a, there's a, there's an amount of energy and life force. And for me, touching my heart is like, um, incredibly powerful. I do that a lot. And sometimes I'll put both hands. I, I, um, did Re- I got Reiki certified about earlier this year and I've been doing it every morning. And so now it's become practice, but I was always doing that because I felt like, oh yeah, that's the, that's the epicenter of our, you know, our heart is, uh, it's different than our brain. And, and I just spent some time, I was uh, helping to facilitate at the heart math, uh, summit in Tulum, mm-hmm. Mexico. And, you know, I'm, I love everything about them. I am not yet certified, but what I learned is, and you can, you can, learn this yourself as, you know, as well, you know, our brain is polar. It has, you ask a question and it's going to give you two different things to think about. It's going to get, you know, is it right? Is it wrong? Um, Our heart has an incredible amount of intelligence and sensory neurons and it is not polar. So there is actual intelligence in our heart. And so I don't want to get this wrong scientifically. And I'm actually going to be speaking soon with the, with the main scientist behind heart math, but you know, our, our heart is really what's sending the messages to our brain. And, and we forget that it's our heart that is what is, you know, the, the epicenter of our being. And so one way to go into a mindful practice that also I found to be very powerful is to breathe very slowly. Imagine breathing through my heart. Mm. Think of something that is really, really um, positive and that feels good. And I actually will either send love to it or sometimes I'll ask questions. Like if I'm really doubting or wondering, I'll ask questions and listen. It's really trippy, but I'll tell you, there is a different response here than there is here. And I just encourage everyone to try it. Ask, ask a question that you've been struggling with. First, ask your brain, write it down, what the answers are, then pause, breathe through your heart, get yourself in a slower, calmer state, think of something wonderful and ask your heart. Notice the difference. That, that really makes a lot of sense. And I've been hearing a lot more. I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with the Heart Math Institute. I haven't studied any of the Heart Math information, but it is intriguing to me. It's very intriguing to me, especially given what I'm doing. It, it does seem like it's pretty connected. And I was also listening to Joe Dispenza's book, yeah. um, Being Supernatural, and he talks about the brain uh, or the the heart being the second brain, but yeah. I'm almost hearing you say that it's the first brain, and it sends that information to our 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 mind, our logical mind. What I would say is, um, and he's he he and Greg Braden are both on the board of Heart Math. Um, mm-hmm. I'm gonna be, I've met I love Joe. Greg Braden too. I love Greg Braden. I know I'm going to be meeting uh, both of them in, in Sedona. They're going to be doing with Heart Math. Uh, oh, when is yeah. that? When is that, by the way? February. So anyone listening, I think it's Stellar Productions, February 20th to the 24th. The Day with Joe is, I believe, sold out. Um, but okay. with Greg, it's not. And he's incredible. Mm. And then Heart Math is going to be Debbie Rosman, who's the CEO, will be there. And they're going to show the film that they've done. And um, I have been really grateful to be involved with the Illuminate Film Festival that brought in Joe um, and his film, What the Health and, and Heal, um, in the past. So they're going to be together again in Sedona in February. Yeah. Wow. So. Wow. That sounds wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah I love I both of them. Oh, I love them. And that, and, and there's a great video that Greg does. It's like a seven minute video about heart intelligence and that's mm-hmm. easy to understand. You know, I don't, I, I don't know that you can say it's the first brain, but the way I feel intuitively about it is I am rewiring and changing myself to look at it and to feel into it as the first brain. So I just encourage everyone to kind of try it, see how it feels. But I do feel that the response I get here is way more loving, uplifting, and powerful, um, less in the egoic kind of yes. ear 
place. So I just, I mean, my aim is to help as many people go more into their heart and more into their, you know, intuition. Cause I think that's where we'll see a shift. That just feels good. When I hear you say that, that just feels like the right, (laughs) it feels like a good direction to, to at least go into and, and, and try for sure. So I love that. So what, uh, what are, what kind of practices, um, other than maybe what we've talked about, like what are some of the practices that you do to keep you connected to your best and highest potential? I have a lot of them. I'm going to boil down the, ba- the main ones that I do most every day. So um, right away when I wake up, I like to kind of just acknowledge like really, really glad I'm here. <laughs> glad that I'm here today. Um, I'm going to do my best um, t- to be of service to myself and to all those I'm here to, to help and serve. And then I'm going to just surrender the rest. Um, I like bringing in this idea of um, showing up for what I can do. And then I, you know, having the spiritual connection for me is probably one of the most important aspects of my life. It's a constant dialogue. So right away to what I call is my, you know, some days it's my team of light, my angelic team, my, my guides, my higher self, my me is me. I just surrender that. Um, and then I have a, um, I've done a little process where I have some things that I've written, like statements that feel true about who I am and what I feel that I'm here to do in the world. And I read those and then I read my list of what I really, what I want to manifest. Um, and I then typically go up and I meditate um, right after that or soon after that. And I, it varies. It could be, you know, short end five minutes. Sometimes it's 25 minutes and I use guided, I do silent, um, I do use the Heart Coherence uh, app that they have. You can clip it on your ear. It's, a, it's Bluetooth, and it, it measures your heart coherence, literally. Um, and there's a way that there's an app. It's through HeartMath. It's amazing. Okay. And you can oh. see where you are in being in that space, that frequency of heart connection. Um, it measures it. So I, I like to use that so I can see. So, I, for example, when my mom calls, I love my mom. My mom has high anxiety, and it often makes me anxious I'm working on that. So I can see the coherence goes down. And right. Okay. Helps to learn, self-correct. So I meditate, and then um, I usually – I have a deck of cards I've created. I have other cards that are inspirational, tarot type, and I um, – typically pull a card and then I'll also do some journaling. And I usually do journaling around um, the evidence that I'm seeing in my life of what's working. Um, I also like to write things that I, I like to be in that space of what I appreciate, what I love. And then I usually write about the card. So yeah, that's wow. my... I, mean, I love this morning you, routine. Like this yeah. definitely sounds like <laughs> something I would I would love to incorporate, and in, yeah, I've gone through various different types of, of routines. You know, like the morning miracles is good, and yeah, doing the, doing the morning notes. You know, the morning uh, is it was it called the morning papers or the morning notes? The oh, morning by pages Julie. by Julia Cameron. Yeah, yes. She's- she started the whole thing. And Hal is actually a good friend of mine who wrote the Miracle Morning. I do like a vari- a variation of that. He's amazing. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I've, I've done variations of it as well, you know, because I, I give different, different amounts of time too, because I think he talks about dedicating, getting up one hour earlier and dedicating that one hour. And it's just, even just getting up an hour earlier than you normally do is a miracle in and of itself. That it's is really a miracle. Sense. <laughs> oh yeah, really sets up your day the right way. I need to get back into that. I was doing so good about getting up at five every every morning, and I don't know with a lot of traveling and getting on different time zones and things like that. It kind of really threw that off for a little while. So starting Monday, I'm back in action. <laughs> yeah, I with you. Yeah. So let's talk about the youest you. I love that phrase, the youest you. I mean, it, it sounds yummy. <laughs> so, but what does it mean to, you know, and how, how can our listeners unleash their youest you? Yeah. So I think a lot of what we've been talking about are really good tools to do this. Um, the way that the, the reason I just, I love this, it's kind of cute, right? Playful, um, but I really, I really do take this one in fourteen trillion. You know, b- the chances of being born. Um, it is something I don't know why. Every single day, I really think about that. I really feel that, and I believe. You know, you could call it your higher self, your fullest potential. 
um, living into your gifts. So the idea of being your USU, it's not like you arrive, right? It's not like this is an evolving, you know, this is an evolving process and journey. I mean, that's what life is. And so what I, and this definitely in my book, I go through a lot of this, but you know, it's asking yourself questions. These big, and this is, I do a lot of journaling on this as well. Like these big questions where what, I, what I'm inviting you to do is really to listen, to connect. We are so easily distracted and busy. I use food. Others on the listening in might've used food or alcohol or drugs or shopping or gambling or sex or all of it or social media or gossiping. I mean, we use different things to get out of the moment, to get out of our feelings. Um, and I just believe when you tune into, you know, your heart, your gifts, your skills, um, what the lesson is from that, from, from those tough emotions, you start to kind of, you get into that space of actualizing who you came here to be. That's, that's how I see it. And, you know, that idea of your most authentic, um, truest USG version of you, that, 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 you know, the, my me is me. If there's no one else who's ever going to have, who's going to live this as me. And so I just think it's our, it's our duty, responsibility. It's a gift to ask these questions like, you know, what am I here for? What moves me? What, how, how do I want to make an impact? Um, how do I add more value to the world? I mean, all of these big open-ended questions, how can I appreciate others more? How can I appreciate myself? How can I honor my heart? How can I be more loving to myself? How can I nourish myself lovingly? These questions lead to, you know, lead to a deeper connection to your, to your higher self, which I believe when we're, we're in that space, I, I really believe the more people the more of us that are tuning into our heart intelligence and intuition, you're going to be, you're going to be living and being and breathing and acting from a space of um, divine connection. Yes. And that is very different than from a, you know, lack mindset of egoic structure and, and uh, fear. And I yes. think, um, yeah. That's so interesting because I was literally thinking that this is about coming from abundance because when you tap into the real you, your unique self, your unique gifts, what you, you know, and, and it, and it's this process, uh, it's this journey of, of really tapping into these little micro truths, but all of these little micro truths ultimately evolve into the bigger truth, which maybe you never ultimately arrive at this bigger truth, but you're getting closer and you're inching closer and, and you're able to just be, like you said, I mean, your, your highest self, your USU. Yeah. And I think to add, it's it beautifully said, you know, cause it could sound like, well, you never get there but the way that I've experienced it. Um, living from, from this place. And I did a lot of life not living from this space. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pushed down my intuition, shoved it down. I mean, I, I happen to be, we all have intuition and it comes in different waves. I happen to have an extra dosage. I think I got like highly sensitive empath slash, like I, I, I get a lot of information that comes to me and I really didn't know how to handle that. And, um, point being, as you start to tune in, you know, what happens is these moments start to feel fuller and start to feel like you said abundant. And so it's just, it's like the next level, the next level of yourself, the next, and that's, and also, you know, with aging, to me, it's like, bring it on because I want to see myself at 95. I feel like my me is me at 95 is going to be like, <laughs> um, just, you know, living from this space. Like, and if, and, and it's not about me. It's like, if we're all doing that in our own way, we all have this internal GPS blueprint treasure map. I mean, that will change. That could really change how we all show up and that changes the world. It really does. So to me, it's, you know, each of us one at a time, but collectively, this is what shifts our, our planet, the consciousness, all of it. So, you know, absolutely. I totally agree with that. I totally agree because if we're, you know, we're being the change, we're being the stand, we're being who we are. We're giving other people permission to shine their own light and be their, their highest self. And, yeah. you know, even if that person's only, you know, 10% away from that, they're, they're moving, they're, they're inching forward and then they're being that way so that other people can be that way and it's a chain reaction. 
Hello, this is Victoria Gallagher. I hope you're enjoying listening to the Power of Your Mind podcast. As a way of thanking you for listening, I'd like to offer you a one-time discount of 35% off your first order at hiptalk.com. Just go to hiptalk.com and enter the code podcast in the discount code area in your cart and you'll receive 35% off your first order. Thank you so much for listening to the Power of Your Mind podcast. That's right. I think it also moves us from a, you know, comp- competitive, cutthroat type of world to a win win, to mm-hmm. uplifting one another, to collaborating, um, to communal wins. Like the more I shine and the more you shine, like, damn, that's a lot of shining. We need that. Like, I am all in the, like, I win, you win. Like, I shine my brightest, you shine your bright. Like, there's room for all of us. And it comes back to what you said. I really do think it's this abundant mindset. And then understanding, you know, I know you work with law of attraction. I mean, the, the universe is abundant. I mean, look at nature. It is incredibly, that is my biggest, that's what I use all the time. That is one other piece. I look all the time. I go to nature for my, for my, uh, for my reminder, trees, tons of trees standing tall. They all stand next to each other <laughs> and they're <laughs> happily proud next to each other. No one worries about the other tree. I mean, it's like, it's this generous, gracious, ever giving abundant. This is what it is. And we forget, you know, in ways because we've been conditioned and could get into a whole other conversation, but that's yeah. why this whole, you know, being in this abundant place and getting that you and I were everyone listening, we're abundant by nature. Look at your trillions of cells that are doing incredible intelligent things without you thinking about it. Exactly. Yeah. It's so funny that you mentioned the tree because, um, and this was only a headline, so I don't even know the details of it, but there was something to the effect that tr- even, even trees, um, they, they actually look after each other. Like there's some sort of. Oh yeah. The that, tree. Yeah. so it's you know it's it's really cool to think that you know in nature i mean we we see the way and you know i mean there's there's negative things that happen in nature as well um you know there's that there is that polarity that balance but you know generally speaking i mean when we're talking about abundance and nature is is very very abundant yeah exactly yeah the whole aspen (laughs) tree you know they share roots but yeah i'm not an expert but it's very cool yeah, it is. So what would you say is the superpower that you believe that we would all have that, um, you know, that could help us to really actualize our, our life dreams and our potential? Hands down, I think it's our intuition. I mm-hmm. think it's, you know, and you could, I think it's heart connection and intuition. Um, mm-hmm. For me, I, I, <laughs> My whole life changed. I'm getting chills as I say this. My whole life changed when I started to listen and pay attention. And I started to trust and have faith in the still small voice. So everybody gets it differently. Some see it, feel it, hear it, know it. Um, I just encourage people listening. Seriously, you want to do a little experiment? I'll give you an experiment. You take one week and take even one day. Take one day and just go in your life and, and notice when you feel you have that, you know, gut feeling, notice, try doing a few things that day from that gut feeling. And then also do a little bit of tracking, look in your past and see when did you listen to your gut, to your intuition and something shifted for the positive, And when did you not listen and something happened that, that may have not been your favorite past event. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done this many a time. You will notice on your own, not because I'm telling you, because you'll see it in your own experience that this is a superpower supercharged compass that is literally our direct line to what I feel is this universal infinite intelligence. We are wired to have it. Um, yes, it takes a little time to hone in, but when you, you know, the moment you just decide, I'm going to, I'm going to honor it. doesn't mean you don't think things through, but you honor it and you listen and you tune in. I mean, my whole life, my whole business has been powered. I would say it's powered by intuition. Mm-hmm. Um, changed my whole life and it's changed so many people that I've worked with. It's, it's, um, it's a, it's a different realm. It's really, the, it requires a lot of faith and trust and courage. However, the rewards are enormous. So I would, I would say that. Yeah, I would agree with, you know, and it, it's, it can be really scary to listen to your intuition because sometimes your intuition is telling you things 
that you don't really, <laughs> you're not ready to hear yeah. and, or you don't, you, you know, you kind of want to be complacent or you kind of want to in, just stay in your comfort zone. But, you know, I, yeah. I think that the more you can go ahead and act from your intuitive guidance, it, there's also going to be additional guidance along the way toward having you know whatever it is that it's telling you to go ahead and do absolutely look one of the biggest areas that it's served me is you know i talked a lot about my the struggles with food and mm -hmm. for those you know there's a lot of uh products up there um that are designed to, to be addictive and that are not nourishing now i'm not bashing them you know eat your cheetos once in a while but like really if you tune into your intuition of your body, I can tell you now, I can feel something immediately. I can see it and know exactly how it'll feel in my body. Um, it's pretty amazing. Like I can, I can just test things in my body with how it feels. It's, it's a gift because I, I, you know, caring for our physical well-being, that's what's housing our, you know, the spiritual, our souls. So, you know, it, this intuition, it goes, it crosses into all areas of our life. It's not just it's decisions with food, it's decisions with career. It's just, and, and we don't always have to look, I don't always take action right away. Sometimes I need to build up my courage muscle. I need to find mm -hmm. a lot of friends to help me. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Well, this has been a, probably one of my favorite podcast interviews, truly. I mean, we're on episode number 77. And this is just so, just so in alignment, I believe with what, um, you know, with, with my thinking, I think my audience is thinking and you just have a wonderful, a great message. Your book is important. I think it's definitely something that people need to 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 get and you're also offering um a, a free uh a free journal on your on your site is that is that you want to talk about that a little bit yeah i have a journal companion journal that goes with it and i also have um some really cool kind of worksheets like around what we've been talking about and as well as I created a manifesto for me and then I there's a blank one I really I, I look at this every day because what we look at you know what we look at comes about so there's a manifesto there's a couple different worksheets there's it just I love um, tools so you can make it actionable and the journal you know I'm all about probably can hear I love writing and just getting getting stuff out as Julia Cameron says get the dust bunnies out of your <laughs> corners of your mind. oh so yes. um yeah yeah, she, she's awesome. Um, so it's, it's, I just, it's a gift for everyone who is tuning in. It's, it's really easily. It's at my website, which is julierieslercom slash journal. Super easy. Oh, and I just realized I should have checked with you. I was pronouncing oh. your name incorrectly. Riesler, Riesler. Okay. It's so all Julie. good. But <laughs> Riesler, Reisler. It sounds like Paul Reiser, who I love. It's all good. I don't <laughs> I don't worry about that. People usually say Julie Riesling, which then they get confused. So there we go. Riesling. Yeah, it's REI like the store. I always say REI like the store. I think we print it. My family pronounces it incorrectly anyhow. It's <laughs> so julieriesler.com forward slash journal. And that is spelled J-U-L-I-E-R-E-I-S-L-E-R.com. And for more information about um, the Get a PhD in You book series and Julie Riesler, you can visit her website, julieriesler.com. You can also visit the usu.com, uh, which is your podcast, right? You have, um, that's where you um, host your podcast. And then in the show notes, uh, we're also going to put your uh, your YouTube channel and your Facebook page, but uh, all of that is uh, facebook.com forward slash Julie Riesler Life Designer. So, wow. Thank you so much for being a part of the Power of Your Mind podcast show. Um, this has just been really, really enlightening and informative. And I, I, you just gave us so many things that we can think about and work on and going to the journal to get the, uh, the free download there and uh, the worksheets and, and start to really apply some of these tips to your life. Well, thank you, Victoria. It's been an honor to be here. I love what you're doing. I love what you're teaching and speaking about. And um, it is my passion as well, just to help as many of our sisters and brothers too, and myself included, 
um, to really shift gears to live, you know, our, our, to live into our highest potential and to have a life that's abundant and joyful. And that's that way for us and for our, you know, families and, and next generation. So I'm thankful to be here today, hopefully add value to those listening. Absolutely. Yes. And I can, I can say you definitely were, you definitely are. And so keep doing what you're doing and thank you so much. If you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with your friends. And once again, be sure to subscribe to the Power of Your Mind podcast, if not already. We can be found as Hip Talk on all our social media accounts. So like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, and sign up for your free self-hypnosis video training course at hiptalk.com. Be sure to subscribe to the Power of Your Mind podcast, and you'll be instantly notified the moment the next podcast becomes available. Also, please be sure to leave a rating and a review to tell us how you're enjoying these episodes, and that way you're making a contribution toward others getting to share in this valuable information. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you soon. You've been listening to the Power of Your Mind podcast brought to you by HipTalk.com, Personal Growth Club, and HypnoCloud apps available at iTunes.